Today we get a few map updates, some small changes and some new music kits. But first, the updates. Oops, looks like some people who should have got the 10 year birthday coin from playing Counter Strike in this last week were unable to because their inventories were full. But don't worry, Valve will still give it to you, this time. And presumably linked to that update is this one, which is a new notification which will be added to the main menu to threaten you into buying a new storage container if your inventory is getting full. I'm peeved about this because I went to the bother of transferring a thousand items out of storage to test when this message kicked in, expecting it to be when you had one, five or ten slots left, but it was still showing up telling me that my inventory was 100% full even after I had deposited well over a hundred items back into my containers again. I just ended up giving up and thinking that this feature is currently a bit broken. I hate the long-winded nature of the deposit retrieve system from containers in the game, and I really can't be bothered to find the exact amount in your inventory for when this message first kicks in. Valve, please fix. A few of the updates stop people without Prime status from being able to do stuff, presumably because new and dodgy accounts were doing new and dodgy things with them, which these changes should hopefully block. This is an interesting one. Blocked player's avatars will get one of several pre-made custom avatars instead, rather than just having a blank profile picture. So in this instance, rather than seeing anime, soldiers and brazzers, we see some gorgeously abstract shapes and colours instead, and hopefully enough different ones that you can always distinguish between players in a match. A few of the maps have been updated. Everything in Black Eye has been moved. I know that because they've literally moved the entire map across in Hammer to get away from the 000 point. This special place is the very middle of the Source Engine's playable space which you think would be an ideal place to put your map, but it is unfortunately where weird things happen. For instance, players can sometimes randomly spawn here. If you have ever spawned in the wall at the top of mid on Dust 2, then this is why. The 000 point is also a spot where other entities placed there will be deleted, and in terms of optimization, it breaks the map up at this point, resulting in longer compile times. In case you wanted to know all that, which you probably didn't, but you might have. Moving the map also makes it harder for me to do direct image comparisons between these two different versions of the map, but I still managed. As you can see, most things have shifted about, either to better line up with their surroundings or just to be better. The stonework on this wall looks more natural, a few of the models like these stairs here have been reworked, grenade clipping has been added to this lattice, which might be less realistic, but at least now you'll know how it'll bounce off if you throw something at it. This metal roof thing here no longer glows, and this flying key that was in the air before has gone. And this map has had its nav mesh upgraded, which does two things. Firstly, it makes bots move better across the map, because previously CTs would get stuck in the spawn and terrorists would sometimes jump into the water and die. And the second benefit for this updated nav mesh is that it's given different parts of the map different place names, which can be seen in the top left corner of the screen. That's how they do it. Honestly, these all feel like changes that should have been made to the map before it was added to the game in the first place. And I'm still unsure whether this map's name is meant to end with an I or with a J. Prime Time, formerly known as Prime, has had its name changed again to Cascade. It probably makes sense to further distance this map's name from the Prime feature that CSGO already has, and also from that popular saying that all the cool kids these days are using where they boot up CSGO for a match and say it's Prime in time. But in order to keep things as confusing as possible for people like me, this map file is still called Prime. So for all of you who wonder why I sometimes get the name of stuff wrong, like Kababool or the SG-556, it's because I do a lot of stuff in the console in-game and that's the name I tend to refer to stuff by, so don't be surprised if I still call Cascade Prime from time to time, but I'll try not to. Sadly in this update, Prime's graphics have been significantly downgraded, like a reverse facelift, a face drop. Reduced detail to help boost performance and limit visual bugs isn't just talking about a prop here or there, it's removed many of the details which set this map apart from the others, and they've all been taken out to improve FPS. I'd say that a good 50% of the details on this map have been removed, including the rubble, the decals, and every single particle effect that there was. Which is a shame. I suppose that this map was around for a while to showcase how it looked, and now it's got to cater for people with slower PCs who just want to get on and to play this map. But it feels like the very thing that made this map so immediately special has been taken away. And it's shown me how much this map benefited from dust motes and particle effects, which helped to transform this map into a living, breathing place. The removal of these things is more understandable though, because they don't work well with the source effects in the source engine. Sadly, the technology just isn't there yet in CSGO for multiple transparencies to play nicely together. So yes, Cascade will definitely run faster on your PC and with fewer visual bugs than before, but still, what a shame. I've provided a link in the description to the older version of the map for anybody interested in knowing how it used to look. I talked about how this map relied on baked in lighting and deliberately hid the real time shadows in the source engine to achieve a softer look. Well, that's also been changed and now we just see the same real time sharp shadows everywhere that are seen in every other CSGO map as well. That's right. Cascade now has Cascade Shadow Maps. 
It has also had its cave walls collision model updated, because it was way too easy before to run up to it and to stick your face through it into the nothingness beyond. You can see that there's also a clip brush added to stop players from getting too close and personal with the surface now. And Breach has had a few minor changes as well, mostly to the clipping to stop the cool kids from activating party in time just here, and also these blinds at A can no longer be seen through. And last, we get onto the music kits, which I'm kind of excited about because one of them is mine. All mine! And 50% my dad's. Like I said earlier, all of the other ones in the Initiator's music kit box are from proper musicians who know what they're doing and make really nice sounding songs. Meanwhile, Heading for the Source is made by two people who, when we made these tracks, never thought anybody was ever going to hear them. And certainly not in this way. I did have a big segment written for the story behind this music kit and what it's led to elsewhere. It was an exciting story of nostalgia and betrayal. But I don't feel this is the time or place to talk about it because this should be about the music kit itself, which you now have access to. Thank you for your support, and should you choose it to accompany your future Counter-Strike adventures, I hope you have fun!